Philosophy in Sociology, Honoris Causa. Hinihiling naming lumapit sa gitna ng entablado si Binibining Reza. Sa bisa ng kapangyarihang ipinagkaloob sa akin ng pamantasang Ateneo de Manila, iginagawad ko sa iyo, Maria A. Ressa, ang titulong Doctor of Philosophy in Sociology Honoris Causa kasama ng lahat ng karapatan at pribilehiyong kaakibat nito. Congratulations! Pasalubungan po natin ng masigabong palakpakan si Dr. Maria A. Reza. Mga kaibigan, pakinggan po natin ngayon si Dr. Reza. Grabe, nakakatakot palang panoorin yung buhay mo, no? <laughs> oh my gosh! Um, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, two people who have always wanted me to be a doctor, my parents, are very thrilled right now because, you know, I didn't go be a medical doctor. So, Mom and Dad, this is for you. Thank you, Father Bobby and Ateneo. This honorary degree means so much to me because I feel like I've spent my entire life studying sociology from journalism to governance to how we behave in groups to emergent human behavior. But, you know, let me bring this directly to you, the class of 2023. In some ways, you can be called the back to the future class, in addition to being the sandwich that you heard from Father Jet, right? But really what's important here is that this is about a lifelong search for meaning and the global battle you are about to join. Let's talk about what that is, right? It is about meaning. So what gets your attention is really what gives your life meaning. Where you spend your time determines what you accomplish, what you become good at. That's important to keep in mind as the battle for your mind is waged and won by manipulating your emotions. Not your heart, as you saw in some of the awards earlier, but your fear, anger, your hate. In the Nobel lecture, I called it toxic sludge. That is what is pumping through our information ecosystem, keeping you scrolling on your cell phones, making it harder for you to deal with the challenge that faced the generations before you, how to build meaning into your life. 
Because meaning isn't something that you stumble across, nor what someone gives you. You build it through every choice you make, through the commitments you nurture, the people you love, and the values, the values Ateneo has brought, the values you choose to live by. But you're also graduating at an existential moment in history. Father Jet said you were the sandwich class, right? Now you're back to the future, but more than that, this is existential, not just here in the Philippines, but all around the world. Now more than ever, we know that information is power. Without the right information, it is impossible to fight back, whether it's to find a cure for a disease, coronavirus, for the climate, or to hold power to account. We need to fight the insidious manipulation social media platforms have allowed for tremendous profit, where lies laced with anger and hate spread six times faster than facts. That's an MIT study from 2018. I mean, think about it this way, right? If your parents told you lie will reward you, if Ateneo told you, lie all the time, we'll keep rewarding you. Would you be here today? What kind of person would you become? Right? This is part of the cascading failures that we're living through today. These lies are like a virus that has infected our information ecosystem, playing to the worst of who we are as people, to the worst of human nature, turning us against each other. They replicate and cripple our body politic, encouraging us to become the worst of who we are. You heard this. A lie told a million times becomes a fact. These next three sentences I've said over and over and over since 2016. It is, it is backed by data, by evidence from Rappler. And we've lived through some dark times because of this. Um, makes me feel a little bit like Sisyphus and Cassandra combined. It is this. I said this at the Nobel lecture. You heard it there. Without facts, you can't have truth. Without truth, you can't have trust. Without trust, we have no shared reality, no rule of law, no democracy. And if we have no shared reality, how can we solve the world's existential problems like climate change? The Philippines is now the most disaster-prone nation around the world. AI, I'm sure you've heard this, artificial intelligence has beaten humanity every single time we've come into contact. What I just described about lies, the design of lies, that is the first time with machine learning in social media, that the algorithms that, that recommend and grow your social media platforms. I mean, it's interesting because the last time in the first time I gave a commencement speech in Ateneo was in 2015, and I was very bullish about social media. Well, now what we know is that social media has created cascading failures that has turned our politics into a gladiator's battle to the death, along with a slew of social harms we have yet to fix, including how all around the world, we are electing illiberal leaders democratically, and they are crushing institutions of democracy in their countries. It makes sense, right? Because if we don't have integrity of facts, we cannot have integrity of elections. But the world didn't learn any lessons from that first contact with AI. Last November, generative AI, far more complex and sophisticated, was released into the wild, into the public sphere, a real-time experiment that will further test our humanity. If the first generation of AI was curation, right? It's how to recommend these, the algorithms, which algorithm is just opinion and code, right? So if the first generation was curation, think of this one, generative AI, as creation and the hubris of man to act like God. And until today, there are no guardrails. With the responsibility of protecting us left in the hands of the people who are rushing ahead for profit. I just want a show of hands. How many of you have used 
chat GPT. Please raise your hand. Oh, look at you in the back. You're very chat GPT, right? This is the generative AI. Okay. I should ask your professors how many <laughs> no. <laughs> Hopefully not, right? At the Well, in two months, Chat GPT hit over a hundred million users. Fastest growing. That's great, right? Hmm. What you may not know was that a few months before that happened, a survey in Silicon Valley in August last year, these are the people who worked on AI, they said that 50% of the people who were working on this said that if it was released as is, that there is a 10% or greater chance that it would lead to an extinction event of us, of humanity, right? Tristan Harris says, think about it like, you know, you know that there's a plane that has a 10% chance of crashing and you're being forced to go on to it. Well, okay, it's bleak. Don't worry, I won't leave you depressed. We can't give up. You have to be prepared. This is the battle you are walking into today. We need your energy, your optimism your commitment to justice. It reminds me of the time when my friends told me, Maria, my parents told me this, you're crazy to fight Duterte. Except I kept saying, I'm not fighting Duterte, I'm just doing my job, right? I'm a journalist. And it was crazy what I had to sacrifice, what Rappler had to sacrifice to do that. Well, like the first time I got arrested. Sabi nung, ano, nung NBI, Ma'am, trabaho lang po. Then he lowered his voice to almost a whisper, very embarrassed as he read me my Miranda rights. He was very uncomfortable, and I almost felt sorry for him, <laughs> except he was arresting me, you know. <laughs> the last act in a chain of events meant to intimidate and harass me because I am a journalist. This officer was a tool of power and an example of how a good man can turn evil and how great atrocities happen. Hannah Arendt wrote about the banality of evil when describing men who carried out the orders of Hitler in Nazi Germany, how career-oriented bureaucrats can act without conscience because they say they're only following orders. You learn about these studies in sociology. In 2019, I was arrested twice in about a month. I posted bail eight times in about three months. Two more came soon after for a total of 10 arrest warrants in about two years. I committed no crime except to be a journalist and to try to live according to our standards and ethics and to hold power to account. Many ask me, how do you find courage? Just like small acts, can turn you evil, courage grows from small acts. So let me share three lessons as you battle for your identity and for meaning. The first, draw the line now for your values. You're in Ateneo, so you have, right? But draw the line. Two, embrace your fear. Three, build your community, but beware the mob. One, draw the line. Every choice you make defines who you are. And they could be really simple, like just choosing to turn right or to turn left, right? But they lead to different paths. Or accepting a bribe, because in your mind, you've rationalized, oh, it's just a gift. Character is created in the sum of all these little choices you make. Now, while you're sitting there with your parents, choose the values that define you. Do it now. Because when you're tested, and you will if you haven't been already, you have to know the lines you've set where on this side you're good and on this side you're evil. That's what prevents situational ethics. This makes sure you cannot rationalize. It makes sure that you can't 
rationalize. Ah, it's, <laughs> sorry. It makes sure you can't rationalize greed or bad behavior, right? Think back to this moment in time. You don't really know who you are until you're forced to defend it. That's a lesson I learned. Then every battle you win or lose, every compromise you choose to make or to walk away from, when you stay silent, because silence is complicity, all these struggles define the values you live by and ultimately who you are. Then when you're in battle, avoid the hate. Be Mr. Spock, you know, in the US, the us against them. Tribalism, what sociologists call, group, call the in-group and the out-group. These labels divide us and have led to Nazi Germany, our brutal drug war, Lila de Lima in prison. Populism is easy. Real leadership is not. Find what we all have in common. That is our humanity. Alone we accomplish very little. No matter how bright or talented you are, it is about what we can do together to find what binds us together. We build a stronger democracy by strengthening our common humanity. Pope Francis calls, called it the World Declaration on Human Fraternity, right? Two, embrace your fear. I've become, you know, people ask me a lot, are, don't you get afraid? Well, yeah, of course. We in Rappler have had these moments, but I was trained as a conflict reporter, a war zone correspondent. I plan the way in and I chart the way out of any field of battle. I've learned that fear spreads and is debilitating. Fear is a luxury. If you're in the middle of chaos, you need to stamp down your fear to have clarity of thought. That's essential so you make the right decision. So whatever it is you're most afraid of, touch it. Hold it, embrace it, and rob it of its sting. Because once you do that, nothing can stop you. People will try to coerce, manipulate, intimidate, or threaten you to get what they want. Often, they have a lot at stake. Often, it comes to power and money. And you have to be clear about what you're afraid of, because those are the buttons they will push. It took me more than a month to confront my fears of jail, of violence. I hated that the baton, the leadership of a news group, was passed to me at that moment in time. But I also knew that I wasn't going to drop it. That's where courage comes from. It's a simple choice and a commitment. Finally, the third, please beware the mob. This is the worst of human nature, and social media mobs have become the norm. You know the, the phrase, right? It's um, our greatest crisis, our paleolithic emotions, our medieval institutions, and our godlike technology. Remember that lies laced with anger and hate spread fastest on social media. It is inciting you to do that, forming lynch mobs that is by design and for profit, power, and money. So switch out of thinking fast to thinking slow. Slow down and think. Fight for your best self. It's worth mentioning that something else that this technology encourages, right? That it's always about you. You know, the influencer. Please don't call a journalist an influencer. No offense to influencers. Um, but please realize that in the real world, in our humanity, it is not about you. You have to actually make sure that you can look at an empty mirror. You have to be confident. Don't cross into arrogance. What do I mean by an empty mirror? That when you look into the mirror, you see the world reflected 
with your ego taken out of it, right? You're not blocking your view of the world. That you see a reflection of the world behind you, not just of yourself. Know that no matter how much of a superstar you are, you cannot accomplish anything meaningful alone. So build and strengthen the community you have now. This is a fantastic community. Here's hopeful data from our civic experiment that we did with almost 150 civil society, the church, um, uh, educational groups, institutions. This is Facts First PH, an influencer marketing campaign for those really boring facts. Right? Every day, we told our mesh layer to share these really boring facts the first time 16 news organizations work together, um, they share the facts on social media and they have to share it with emotion, but they can't use anger. And here's the wonderful thing we found. Inspiration spreads as fast as anger, as fast as hate. I said it in the Nobel lecture, get rid of the toxic sludge believe in the good. I'll leave you with one of the toughest moral choices I've had to make because you live, you are joining a battle in extremely uncertain times, right? This is one of the toughest moral choices when I was still Jakarta Bureau Chief, so this was decades ago, in the final days of the Indonesian military scorched earth policy when they were killing pro-independent supporters. My team and I were leaving the capital, Dili, to drive to Suai, about four hours away. I was told there had been a massacre, hundreds who had taken shelter in the church. How did I know? The parish priest was a Filipino, Father Hilario. We were about halfway there when we stopped for gas and a man, a friend, a source, came running to our car. He looked desperate. He asked me for a ride back to Dili because he said he was being hunted and he feared for his life. I couldn't turn the car around because we needed to go to Suwai after reports of violence kept coming, right? I couldn't bring him with us because it would take him directly to the Indonesian military and all of us at CNN would become vulnerable. Our first responsibility was to get the story for our global audience. So I told him we could pick him up that evening on our way back to Delhi. We got to the church. There was a massacre. It was a long, grueling day. When we drove back, we got to our designated meeting point an hour late, so it was dark. We waited an hour. He wasn't there. We waited another hour. He didn't come. And only later did I find that he had been killed. 37 years of being a journalist, and I always ask myself, did I do the right thing? In situations of anarchy and war, it's hard to distinguish right from wrong. And sadly, the war is not in Russia and Ukraine. It is here in your pocket. It is an individual battle for facts, for integrity. It's hard to distinguish right from wrong. But there is only your mission, the purpose you are there. So, what gives your life meaning? At a time of fragmentation, of a flattening of meaning, when the very words that once held us together, like democracy, are co-opted by the enemies of democracy, the baton, the mace, is being handed to you. It's going to get worse before it gets better, because it's going to be tough to tell fact from fiction, which is why you have to prepare yourselves. This time matters. What you do matters. This is in your hands, but you're not alone. Look to your left and then look to your right. Decades after my own graduation from half a world away, the people I sat next to in my graduation rallied to our cause. They rallied around the values we defined when we were sitting where you were sitting. 
when the kindness of strangers became real, because in the midst of fear, right, thankfully fear that has lifted slightly, our community in the Philippines supported us. When Ateneo stood up for its values and its students, when the Nobel Prize reminded us that doing the right thing is the right thing. I wouldn't be standing in front of you today if we at Rappler didn't have support. I have lost some freedom. There are costs to it, right? I have to ask for permission to travel. And yes, it took years before I could begin to clear my name. But in January this year, four criminal tax evasion charges, a possible you know, 34 years in jail, it disappeared like this when we were acquitted by And to that, I bow to the courage of the men and women in the judiciary, the three courageous justices in the Court of Appeals. So, don't be distracted. Find your meaning because what you do today matters. You will define what our society will look like, how our democracy will evolve, I said you were a back to the future class, right? Milan Kundera said this. He said, the struggle of man against power is the struggle of memory against forgetting. Technology is making that struggle harder. So get ready for battle. Draw the line, embrace your fear, and build your community, but beware the mob. In 2015, when I stood at this podium, I told that class that we live in science fiction times. I could not have imagined where we are today in 2023. We are living in science fiction times and our fate is in your hands. So congratulations, class of 2023. You will take us forward. Close your eyes with me. Just close your eyes. Feel the other people in this room. And imagine the way you want the world to be. Breathe it in. Feel it. Now go. Look up. Look to your left. Look to your right. Go out and make that happen. We must. It is up to you. Go, class of 2023. Mga kaibigan, ang Pangulo ng Pamantasang Ateneo de Manila, si Padre Roberto C. Yap ng Kapisanan ni Jesus. Bilang tanda ng pasasalamat at pagkilala kay Dr. Maria Ressa, inihahandog ng Pamantasang Ateneo de Manila ang isang replika ng orihinal na estatwa ng La Immaculada Concepcion. Ang orihinal na estatwa ay nakalagak noon sa Ateneo Municipal de Manila sa Intramuros. Ang replikang ito ay nilikha ni Juan Sajid Imao, isang kilalang manlililok na kinumisyon ng pamantasan. Ang Immaculada Concepcion ay patrona ng Pilipinas at ng pamantasang Ateneo de Manila. <clears throat> 